All right. All right. We'll start over. Let's see if anybody comes in now. Also, real quick. Let me see if I can. There. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm off there. Who's in there? Ned Gallick. What's up, brother? Okay, so I'm not going to do the intro again. We already did that. But uh, when we left off before the interruption, um, Luke over here was just pitching some... Uh, well, not pitching. I'll do the quick, the quick and dirty of what I had in case you guys already saw it. So, yeah. Um, anyways, I'm from Gus Fox Ace Hardware Atlantic. We donated stuff to the Project Lawn, to Jake. Um, got a lawn care nut sticker on our back garden center door. So if Jake makes stickers, we'll gladly put one of those up. But uh, we have four stores in Northwest Indiana and one, well, three in Northwest Indiana, one in Illinois. We have one in Lansing, Illinois, which has been around basically forever since, like, the 1930s. Um, and then we have one in Dyer, Indiana, which is a steel dealer uh, and a licensed Toro repair facility, so they can do all the warranty work on your Toro lawnmowers and snowblowers. And then the Munster, Indiana store has a full Echo line. You can get Echo parts and all that stuff. And then they recently just acquired the store in Winfield. Um, Indiana, which is right by Crown Point, for people that live out this direction. Um, so what I brought today is stuff that people who are super hardcore into lawn care will know about, about and want to use it. People who maybe are not as into it. Care. Fungus season with the humidity and the ridiculous heat we're having and all the dew in the morning. Um, so I brought the Bio Advance. This is around $20, give or take. Uh, um, for the, the folks that want to try the liquid approach, we also have the granular Scott's Disease X. Uh, in the spring, we have all the traditional Scott's Four Steps. We have Milky Spore for grubs. We have Grub X. We have 10, 10, 10, 13, 13, 13. We carry the Jonathan Green products. And, and today, we just got an entire truck. So, 10.99 a bag is the ortho we'd be gone, which is pretty much just not going to want to spray this when it's a thousand degrees outside the way it is today. Um, I think it's 90 and below according to the label, but you always want to read the labels on everything. Um, so, this is will kill crabgrass plus most of your common broadleaf weeds without hurting your turf grass. Um, I have the Ortho Home Defense, which they make several varieties of this. They make a granular, they make a spray for inside the house. This is for insects, so this will take care of fleas, ticks, ants, mosquitoes, cinch bugs, all those kinds of things. This will do 5,300 square feet, and again, hose end, ready to spray, self-mixing, super easy. Um, and then going into more of the power equipment now, these are new within the last couple of years. This is the Toro Maintenance Kit. So this comes with an air filter, a fuel stabilizer, a spark plug and a bottle of Toro oil for your four cycle lawn mowers. We have one for Briggs and Stratton engines, which is this one, and then we have one I believe that is Kohler and Toro engines. Um, so these are good to have. And then the last thing I brought is the V Fuel, it's 94 octane. Ethanol is what causes your machine not to start if you leave it in there all winter. Um, this does prolong the life of your machine. It's a little more expensive up front, but it can be anywhere from like 90 to 100 bucks, depending on where you go for a tune up and to clean out your carburetor. So this is a two year shelf life in the unit. So you don't have to run it out at the end of the season and it will last five years unopened. And pump gas will break down within about 30 days. So if you're not using a fuel stabilizer, you need to think about using one. And if you don't want to mess with a stabilizer, you can just go with this. Um, they make it in a 40 to one and a 50 to one two cycle mix for small engines. So that's kind of what I brought. We have a huge variety of stuff in the store you know, your basic home improvement stuff, but we try and keep things in the store that we know are going to sell in this area. Um, and we've been excited to work with Jake and, and Al. And um, I was super excited when Jake asked me to come on because I regularly watch his videos and I regularly watch uh, Alan's videos too. So it's kind of neat to be here and uh, fire away with any questions. I'm All right. excited to see Jake do his thing, but if there's anything I can put my two cents in on, I will as well. Awesome. All right, well, first I'm going to go ahead and say hello to everybody that came in here. Ned Gallick, what's up, brother? John Kane the third, how you doing? Danger Lawn, how you doing? Uh, Ken B, glad it's working. Lawn Care Addicts, what's up, bro? 
Um, a couple retracted. Jimmy Lewis, the my brother from Utah. How you doing? Um, Ned Gallick, um, complimenting your store. I go to your Ridge Road store in Munster a lot. Great people, very helpful. Great, nice that's nice. That. We appreciate the business. Mm, Chris Oswald, that's my uncle, by the way. Um, throw that router in front of the John Deere and run it over. Will do. Thank you for the feedback. Um, <laughs> Danger Lawn, I'm having issues um, hearing what Luke is saying. Hmm. Well, we've done all we could. Um, catchy, in, catchy in that. See, these names are weird to pronounce. Um, I've been getting a lot of millipedes. Anything I can put down early next spring. I feel it's too late this year. You could probably spray this, to be honest. Um, I will look at the label now because that's what Label's most law. good people <laughs> should do. Be proactive and read the label. Most of the time, these labels are written out right everything where you need it to be. Millipedes, right there. And it's actually highlighted. So, mealybugs, midges, millipedes, and mites. Mole crickets and mosquitoes. So, yeah, spray this down, or you can get the granular if you're more comfortable pushing around the fertilizer spreader. But uh, use this, and this takes care of a lot of things. And the spray version for inside the house will take care of millipedes, too. What's nice about this is it kills on contact, and it prevents and it's safe for kids and pets once it's dry. So go with this. I'm glad I brought it. Yeah, I, I like that too because I have the um, I have the pro version. I have the I have the Bifen IT. Yeah. And what I like about it is that it's a multi-purpose product. Yeah, you're not just killing one exactly. thing. Exactly. It's it takes care of most of what comes out. And it can be used in just the yard. Right, that's and that's what's what like. nice about this is it won't harm your plants. And mosquitoes that carry diseases like West Nile virus and Zika, those tend to live while well, they do live underneath leaves so even underneath your grass leaves your bushes hit everything in your yard with this um, this one has bifenthrin and zeta cypermethrin in it so that's most of the comments See, that's a lot of the stuff that jake was talking about the pro stuff this is the same stuff that pros use it's just condensed down into a more user-friendly goof proof sort of application so okay um your connection is garbage. Get your modem and take it back to Walmart. I didn't get it from Walmart. I got it from AT&T. How embarrassing is that? Um, all right, let's see. Any suggestions for killing goose grass in Bermuda? Well, to be honest with you, I, I've never dealt with that. I'm a northern guy by heart. I've been a northern guy all my life, so I can't really help you there. But there's tons of guys in the community I know that deal with uh, Bermuda lawns, like, for instance, Alan, the lawn care nut down there, he, he deals a lot with uh, warm season grass types. And then specifically, my good buddy Mike over at Real Low Dad, he teaches people how to uh, maintain a really low mode Bermuda grass lawn. So I'm, I'm sure if you want to learn a little bit more about that, I'm not sure if he's done a video on it, but if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that, I recommend you go over there. Uh, again, that's Real Low Dad, R-E-E-L, Low Dad. Just search that up, and that's my buddy Mike over there, Real Low Dad. He'll be able to help you out. Yeah, uh, I'd say just read the label again because there's a lot. Exactly. Of, warm season grasses are tough because there's a lot of over-the-counter products that will specifically tell you not for warm season turf. So um, I know most of the variations of like these sort of things usually have a southern lawn version too. Um, so just like he said, check out some of the people in the community that are, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm sure Al would be able to answer that question too, but... All right, let's see what we got. Um, oh, here, here we go. This is a great question. I get this a lot. Uh, this is my uncle uh, in here, Chris Oswald. Uh, in this temp, when is it best to water the lawn? Well, Chris, you know, I've talked to you about this numerous times, buddy. But it's not that's like okay. he's calling you out for not listening, Uncle Chris. <laughs> but uh, let, let me just let me be honest with you, okay? But if there's no temperature, but you have to look at the lawn. The lawn will start to tell you. Once you notice the lawn starting to turn a tick gray bluish, right? It just the leaves start to curl up, and it just it just starts to look dry, right? Once you notice the lawn starts to look dry, then that's when you start watering it. Now, as far as you know how to water it, um, do, go deep and infrequent, right? Because the idea in the summertime is to do whatever we can to encourage deep root growth uh, for long-term success, right? The the deeper roots we can push in the summertime the more tolerant of a grass we are building. So, and it's always better to water early morning versus mm -hmm, evening, exactly. but I was just talking to Jake before we went live. My lawn, I mow it four and a quarter because I have a uh, super recycler, Toro, yeah. and it allows me to go four and a quarter. So I'm mowing really tall. 
and in turn, it's shading everything, so it's not needing as much water. But the first time I watered was in the evening, and you know, but they say it can increase your chances of a fungus and all that kind of stuff. But any water at any point is better than no water at all. So exactly. if you have to break the rule, it's just like if you have to break the one third rule because you've been on vacation, you have to cut your lawn, you still gotta cut it. So if it's getting kind of crunchy and your feet are looking stressed, it's better to water at night if you have no other choice than to not water at all. Yeah, so. exactly, because when you do let it go, that actually negatively affects soil life, right? Like the microbial activity will go down, all sorts of things. So even if you can't keep your entire lawn irrigated, again, it's a good idea to at least keep your main stage or your front lawn, right? Keep that irrigated so that you can at least maintain the soil like there. Because again, that's the area that we try to push the most to get it looking the best and dominating the neighbors. Now, one more thing I want to do, Chris, while you're here, because you asked me a lot about how to water your lawn, right? So what I want to do just to kind of clarify this is I do have some resources, right? I have, I have a video I put out yesterday talking about how to calibrate sprinklers. And then within that video, um, I do have links to the video I did two years ago where I actually talked about how to water the lawn, the sprinklers I recommend, all of that. So Chris, if you're watching this, your best bet would be to just go check out my video from yesterday, go to the description, I promise you, and look for a link that tells you how to water the lawn because my video is there and it'll help you out. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. That's the thing. These these chats get so big and you coming in hot and heavy. Exactly. That's good though. It, it is. You've got to keep you on your toes. Um, what's up, Jake? How is your lawn doing during this heat? Well, um, it, it, looks nice. it does. Yeah. So we did have a dry spell the past couple of weeks, but fortunately, God has blessed us with a couple of days of heavy rain. So the uh, the lack of water hasn't really been an issue. In fact, it's been more so on the fungus side. And another thing. Another thing I've been noticing though too is when you do come out of these dry periods, I notice um, I notice these brown areas in the lawn, right? And then this is typically when a lot of you guys want to jump around and go, oh no, why do I have brown areas in my lawn? Well, you have to look at what's been done to the lawn. In fact, Luke and I were just talking in depth about this before we got into the show, that when you notice brown spots on your lawn, especially after the lawn's coming out of dormancy, what you need to do is you need to look at what you've been doing on that lawn or to that lawn while it was stressed. like. A good example would be one of my customer lawns, right? Like, you know, I have a lawn care business and I can't always do things when it's appropriate. I, I pretty much just have to do it when I can do it, right? So like mowing my client lawns, I gotta make money. So I gotta cut it, even if it's stressed. And what I've noticed is that four to five days, even after, you know, having all that rain and the lawn's coming back nicely, I'm starting to notice these brown areas where my lawnmower tires are actually weighing down. So. Um, my assumption is that, you know, going on top of the lawn when it was stressed like that, um, the, the weight from those tires was enough to, you know, damage the crowns of the grass plant because at that point, um, when the grass is under stress, it's focused on, it's focused on creating that defense mechanism, which is the dormancy, um, you know, to protect itself from heat. It's not so much focused on what's going on as far as traffic goes. So learn that lesson the hard way. In fact, if you want to learn a little bit more about that, stay tuned. There will be a video coming out Wednesday. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, other than that, Andy, things are looking great. And Patrick Hand, opinions on watering towards the end of the evening, if that's really the only option in work hours. Yeah, we just talked about that. If it's what you got to do, just do it. Something's better than nothing. Your lawn is not, your lawn's going to need that water. It, 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 it's just like us. We need water to survive, mm -hmm. especially right. if you're fertilizing. If you're somebody that's throwing down fertilizer, you have to irrigate because you can't push your lawn with food and then have it be all lethargic because it's not getting any water. So perfect example is heat. If you're going to throw down an organite or a different organic clone Here, right back. or ahead. even a general purpose, uh, you know, summertime Scott's fertilizer, you need to water because if you don't, it's just going to put undue stress, continued stress on a lawn that's already stressed. So that's that's my advice: is just be sure to irrigate. Um, what else do we have on here? How rude of me! Robert Palmer is a first-time lawn watcher. Love the video on the Fourth of July. There you go. Oh, thanks. Mm -hmm. See, we're talking about water, and we're getting thirsty. 
Yeah, I mean, here's the deal. Like when I have a guest come on, I usually prepare and I have waters out. But I don't we know. got we had a good conversation before this started. So yeah, so I forgot to get the water. We're watering out, but, uh, frequently, deep and frequently. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just water and your lawn's not going to know the difference if it's day or night. And I mean, in an ideal world, it's good to water in the morning. But if you don't have an automatic underground irrigation system or you know, that's another thing. We sell timers of a couple different types in the store. You hook it to your spigot, you hook your hose to it, and you can set it to come on and off. That's another option. So, you know, I work two jobs. I don't always have time to water. Tonight, I'm probably going to try and squeeze in a mow after the temperatures cool down a little bit, and I might run the sprinkler just to try and get those real hot areas along the curb and the sidewalk in my driveway a little bit of water. And do I really think it's an ideal situation? No, but something's better than nothing. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody was asking about humic acid in the summertime. Um, I don't know who it was, and personally, it's hard to find the comment, but someone asked about humic acid in the summertime, especially the Humic 12 product, four ounces per thousand. Is that a good application rate? Yes. In fact, during this time, I would probably consider going a little bit higher. And the reason I say that is, again, it's a good idea to take this time and overload the lawn with humic because what the humic's going to do is it's just going to keep the soil in check, right? It's going to chelate, right? Chelate is a word we use a lot in the community and basically what that means is it's making nutrients more readily available to the plant. So when you put that humic down, you're creating passageways uh, for nutrients to reach the plant roots. So if, if anything, when in doubt about humic, humic um, 12 or really any humic acid, just put it down, right? In fact, if you think you're not putting down enough, put down more. It's only going to help you. Like he said, if it's going to help the plant uptake those nutrients, mm -hmm. that's what it, it needs help in this heat. I mean, it was 98 today at 3 o'clock. I think the heat index was right. 110. This is heat that we're not used to having. And these are cool season lawns. It's not like lawns in Florida. It's not like St. Augustine grass or Bermuda or some of those lawns. And they're used to this heat. So we need to do what we can to help our lawns. And I can tell you, yeah, Jake's looks awesome. As I came down the street, I was like, bam, there's Jake's lawn. You know? <laughs> All right, Jason Finley. Uh, I got temps over 95 for the last five days here in Philly. And for the last couple, um, we've got crabgrass invading big time. Can't spray now because it's too hot. Help you the man. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate that. So, yeah, I understand that. In fact, one thing you're going to hear me talking about a lot, especially as we finish off the year and come into the following year, um, if you can't get to the crabgrass this year, which is understandable, right? If you have tons of crabgrass in your lawn, I don't really recommend messing with it. In fact, if you can't get to it this year, I'd recommend you just let the lawn go and then start in the spring with a pre-emergent application. And in the meantime, you know, go ahead and fill in the gaps like I talk about. Nurture the lawn. Nurture the lawn with proper mowing, uh, fertilization, irrigation, the big three as I like to call it. And then once you get to fall, you can, you can do a good overseeding to fill in the gaps. Again, whatever you get, make sure it's clean because you don't want to bring any foreign material in there and possibly get more weed seeds, which again is the last thing we want to do. So yeah, a lot of times people will see a bare spot and think they need to add something to it. You know, I'm a fan of never adding anything extra to the lawn because you don't know right. what's in that material. So it may look really dramatic and drastic because, oh my gosh, there's a huge spot with no grass. But if you get good, healthy turf grass growing in there, if you think about it, unless something dug a hole, that's the same grade as the rest of your yard. So if you have to, take a metal rake or one of those garden claws, turn that dirt up a little bit, you know, add the seed to it and just keep it watered. Mm -hmm. Seed to soil contact, keep it watered. And like Jake said, crabgrass is tough to kill when it's mature. Oh, and yeah. with as hot as it is, for right here, 90 degrees. Apply when daytime temps are between 45 and 90. Well, we're not going to be anywhere near 45 till probably November. So, yeah. And even if you get a cool night, a lot of people will say, oh, spray at night. Well, if it's still like tonight, probably going to be 88, 89 at night because it's going to be <laughs> super hot tomorrow. So this is not the kind of stuff you want to do. And let it die off. Let the frost kill it. You'll probably, well, you will be left with a bare spot, but that just gives you something to work on. You know, like he said, wait till next year and hit hit it with a pre-emergent. Exactly. And get your lawn thick to where it's harder for the crabgrass to compete, because in this temperatures, in these temperatures, the only thing that's going to grow are weeds and and crabgrass and weedy grasses, because your right. turf grass is going to check out. Exactly. So, you know, keep it watered, keep your mowing in check, and you know, just keeping a thick lawn can help with that. And I would second that. Just let it let it lie. If you really, really, really want to try and get rid of it. Wait till the temps die off and then try and kill it with something. But 
just know you're going to be left with a spot where that was. Um, exactly. And then you've got to worry about more crabgrass competition. That's why it's important to watch the soil temps and get that pre emergent mm -hmm. down. And I actually do have an example for you guys. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which a lot of you guys are here right now, and you go to playlists and you go to the Project Lawn, uh, JTLK LCN Project Lawn, that's a collaboration project I was doing with Alan, and then before you know it, he dumped it on me because he was too busy. But when he gets back up here, I'll be sure to get his butt it's down there. time for you there. to leave the nest, though. He's pushing you out yeah. of the nest and telling you to take it on. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of like it, you know, because I have more control, but... Got plus, plus he's somehow. a couple thousand miles away, but yeah, it already looks great, and that just goes to show mm -hmm. the simple things like fertilizing and mowing properly can make a huge difference. And getting the you know those of us that have deciduous trees that drop through leaves, getting leaves off the lawn makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I moved into a new house. Airflow is key. And I had areas where I needed to get out there and get the leaves off because the previous owner moved out, and those areas had some bare spots because. That lawn was getting ready for winter, and it was grabbing all the nutrients it could, and there was no airflow going to those areas, and I was left with bare spots. So it's key to get the leaves off, and it's key to take care of proper mowing and proper watering, and just a little bit of fertilizer, you know, helps. You don't have to feel like you have to fertilize all through the whole year. You know, you look at a lawn where nobody touches it, and a lawn where somebody fertilizes once in the spring, once in the fall, that lawn with the two doses of fertilizer is going to look eons better than the lawn that gets nothing. So, right. you know, bodybuilders can't be bodybuilders if they don't work out and do supplements and protein shakes. So you got to look at it the same way as you want. It's still a living thing. Someone listens to the podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what we got here. Man, they're, they're coming in fast. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, SFL Spotter, thinking of doing a project on my St. Augustine and putting in Bermuda. What are your thoughts? I'm in South Florida. Again, can't help you out there, buddy. We're cool season guys. That's Florida, right. Even though it's Florida hot. Um, but then again, SFL, go check out my buddy Real Odette. He maintains uh, Bermuda on a regular schedule, so he can probably help you out there. Um, my plan for the lawn in early September is to triple aerate Milo 15 pounds per thousand and 10, 10, 10, 10 starter at 5 pounds per thousand. I would say it's a good plan, but I don't know that you need to do the 10, 10, 10. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's good to, depending on where you're at, I'm assuming you're cool season if you have a fall plan. But um, another good thing to do is reach out to some of the college extensions. I know Purdue has a cool um, extension. And years ago, they used to recommend 15 pounds per thousand twice a year, and that was it. But, you know, I like to throw it down. So, um but I'd say you'd probably be able to get by with either just the 10, 10, 10 or the 15 pounds of Milo. Um, but the triple aeration is good. If you rent an aerator, they're heavy, which we rent them out. If you're going to pay the money to rent it, use it. Go every which way in your yard because you're not going to do any damage. The more you aerate, the better you are. And Jake and I were just talking about the, the liquid aeration products that he's been using. I want to try it next year. And I'm excited for that. So... Maybe try a liquid aeration, but you're not going to do any damage. If you get an aerator, you know, don't stop. Just keep going. Yeah, you know what's funny? He got the Malorganite from you guys, but I still have to do all the leg work and rent the aerator. So oh, nice. yeah, that's... Thanks, Al. <laughs> Maybe next year we can hook you up with an aerator. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If I decide to mechanically right. aerate. And they're big, but it's cool. If you have a neighbor that has maybe never aerated... It'd be a cool time to say, hey, you want to go have these on, a, on an aerator with me and you guys take care of it? You know, you may get a four-hour, four hour, five-hour rental, get both lawns done, but bring a buddy with because they're heavy. But you get your workout in, too. Drip irrigation for lawns. Danger lawn, that's a whole other ball game. In fact, I don't even know what a drip irrigation is. I think that's for your flowers. I think you'd end up with uneven. Um, so here's an example. My house, I have a light in front, like a three-bulb post light. And I have two shepherd hooks with a hanging basket of flowers on each one. I water them every day. They drain out of the bottom. The grass underneath there is eight inches tall right now, where the rest of it is six inches. So I think if you did a drip irrigation, you would have tufts of grass. It would be uneven water distribution. I'd say if, if you're going to water, go with either an oscillating or, a, or an impact sprinkler. Mm -hmm. um, because then you're going to get even coverage. Um, it, uh, you'd have spotty... You could get by with drip irrigation in your flower beds or running bushes or like a soaker hose in those areas, but I would stay away from it on your turf grass. It's it's gonna just have uneven coverage. Mm-hmm. Hey, he's lawn and landscaping. I think I followed him on Instagram. Yeah, Aiden? Yeah. Aiden, what's up, brother? How you doing? 
Um, got a serious backyard rental. Yeah, Aiden, you know, tell me more about it. I want to hear. I want to hear a little more about it. Like, what are you putting down? Like the the XGN eight one eight. I got. Some um, Patrick Hand, thoughts on how often to use humate liquid iron and liquid deep thatch? Great question, Patrick Hand. So um, when you get the products, they do come with PDS and they do give you schedules. And I believe the stable recommendations is to apply them once every three weeks at most, at least every four weeks. If when in doubt, every four weeks is ideal. But like, but if you're like me and you're a little more advanced and you want to have a little fun, you could you could put down one of these products every weekend, right? Or maybe even twice a week, right? Just make sure that you change it up a little bit, right? Instead of putting down like four different products once a month, what I would do is I would do one product one week and then I'd move on to another the other week just to kind of add a little variation to it and do kind of a micro push, kind of like with what I'm doing with my front lawn. Like instead of hammering it once a month with heavy doses of nitrogen like I was in the beginning with all the rain, uh, what I'm doing for the summertime is I'm, hit, I'm hitting it every two weeks with the quadruple dart that you guys heard me mention. And then in between that, I'm also putting down 12 ounces of humic 12. So the idea is you can put it down as often as you want. You're not gonna hurt anything. But with liquid iron, that's a little different. You don't wanna go over the border with that one because if you do, you can negatively affect the lawn in so many ways. Um, as it is a micronutrient and it's only needed in smaller quantities. And it stains fact, everything too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And another thing is when you apply too much of it, you can actually turn your lawn gray or even black. And that's not something you want. Maybe for Halloween, but... Yeah, if you're going to spoon feed your lawn, I would go with a different type of, you know, like Jake's products that he's been pushing from the... The uh, Green the County products, line. All the Green County Yeah, stuff. like that's... definitely that 002 microgreen, that's your friend. If you're looking for a great product to use in the summer, just something that you could even go crazy with and it's not going to hurt anything, that is a great product right there. Jake and I were talking about how easily nitrogen washes out, and I, I didn't know. We had a really wet June, and I had done my pre-emergent in April, and then I put down my um, malorganite in the first week of May. Well, then we got all this rain, and my lawn was not as dark green as I wanted. And I, yeah, the more it rains, the more you need to fertilize. So, and the DNR at a workshop I was at, and he told me that if you do a soil test, you almost don't even look at the nitrogen number because <laughs> the next night you could get a little bit of rain and it's completely different. So, um, you know, I, I do like the idea of some of the micro and macronutrients that you can get from the Green County products. Mm -hmm. I definitely want to experiment with them next year. Definitely. Um, Tom Andrews, spray dethatch tonight. Do you recommend spraying, spreading another product or let it go as is, especially in this extreme heat in Cincinnati? Uh, Tom, that's a great question. Now, um, there's so many answers to this question. You could really do whatever you want, but what I recommend doing during this time is look for visuals. You guys hear me talk about this all the time. With everything I talk about, um, while I do recommend a structure to you guys, like I typically like to recommend a monthly schedule or regimen, I also like for you guys to be a little more um, flexible with your applications, right? Like, Look for visuals. If you notice your lawn doesn't need any more product, then don't give it any more, right? Like I even talked about this in one of my videos where I talked about summer fertilization. I said one thing I like to do, especially with products like the 1801 Green Punch, is instead of putting down 12 ounces, um, which is the recommended rate for the summertime here in the, the, north or, uh, the northern cool season zone, um, instead of doing that, what I like to do is I like to break it up and I like to do lower application rates more frequently. So instead of 12 ounces once a month, I would do six ounces and I would do them every two weeks. And then what I would do, two weeks later, you know, we're not getting a lot of rain. I'm just watering it, right? Um, if it looks good, I'm not going to, I'm not going to put any more product on it, right? And that's another good thing about microdosing is that you can actually save a little money in the process because um, because if your lawn doesn't need any more, right, then you don't have to put it on there. Whereas if you get it all at once, you're, you're getting an extra push that it doesn't need. The old phrase of if it's not broke, don't get a new tree and it doesn't, you know, you want to give it 15, 20 gallons a couple times a week, deep in frequent watering just like your lawn. If it's looking good, it doesn't look like it's under any stress, then leave it. You know, my lawn was looking good, but I had all that rain and then we started warming up and I had family coming into town last week, so I wanted to throw down so that it would look nice for them. So about 10 days out, I put down a slow release and it's starting to come 
into its own again, and I'm having to mow twice a week again, and, you know, I probably won't throw anything else down until the fall and give it a little bit of boost to put it to bed for the winter. That's probably the next time I'll fertilize. So, you know, it's, you don't always have to push and push and push. I know it's fun to do that, and I know it's it's great to get out there and walk the lawn and, and spread some fertilizer around, but, you know, you don't really have to, especially if you take good care of it in the spring, you know. <laughs> I'd say focus more on your watering and your mowing right now. Exactly. You need to focus on, and if you're going to do anything, stick to the spoon feeding. You don't want to push too hard. Exactly. Um, Here, half pound of nitrogen from starter in April, half pound. Down starter fertilizer or, you know, uh, a 10 10 10 in the spring, and then you hit it again in the fall and it works. If it works for you, then it works. You know, if, if it's right. looking good, then exactly. I'd say, again, focus on watering and get it through, depending on the area you're in. If you're experiencing extreme heat, just do what you need to do to get the lawn through the heat, and everything else will fall into place from there. Right. Um, blind guy 210. Can I put Carbon X down in the summer or should I wait till the fall? This is a really great question, especially because Carbon X is a little bit more of an advanced formulation compared to Morganite because of the higher analysis rate of nitrogen. And remember, Carbon X doesn't hurt anything, kind of like any organic fertilizer, which Carbon X is not. So don't mistake me for that. It's not going to hurt anything, but again, you don't want to push it too hard. Yeah, in the you're summer, not going right? to go 15 pounds per yeah. thousand of carbon X. You know that's like that's like what three pounds of nitrogen. That's a lot. That's a oh god. But anyway, the idea is that spoon feed it right. If we tell you three pounds per thousand, that's assuming normal conditions. Proper mowing and irrigation. Then maybe back that down to a half pound. Right. That's definitely what I would do for the summer. And again, if it doesn't need it, maybe wait till the fall and give it that little bit. Because a lawn that feeding in the fall is going to wake up and look twice as good as the lawn in the neighborhood right. than one that didn't. You know, so mm -hmm. here let me refresh this real quick. There we go. We got twenty people in here. Here, I, I skipped a couple of questions, so we'll go back and miss any. We talked about that one. Um, love the channel on time from you. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Jake, on the channel, I learned a ton from you, Alan. Ask who, who cuts his hair. And I just got him. Or, yeah, I got him into Alan and you. And <laughs> he's, he's sending, we Snapchat each other our lawns all the time. So my wife's like, who are you talking to? I'm like, Uncle Bob. So. No, you know, you know what's funny? You know my project one that I'm doing with Alan. Yeah. The Basaga family. Yeah. So I had the had Rich on the other um, like what two months ago and his brother was getting on there like uh oh Rich you working out <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's funny because I've I've got more people asking me now. I put my lawn up on Facebook all the time and I know eighty percent of my friends don't care about it at all but people are asking <laughs> What fertilizer do you use? And people are coming over, hey, the lawn looks great. So I'm trying to stick to Instagram more because I know there's more people out there that are more into the community. But um, if you want to follow me, it's lkern, K-E-R-N, 91. I'm trying to post more about my lawn. I don't have a YouTube channel. I don't vlog. I just kind of post pictures, and I get corny and over the top with my weird lawn post. But we're all, <laughs> we're all sort of the same. Um, the Do33W. You. Hey, miss the July 4th Malorganite throwdown. What can I do now? Well, it's not too late. You can put it down. It ain't going to hurt anything. Right. I didn't put mine down because it was extremely hot on the 4th and I was working. So I put it down last mm -hmm. Sunday. And again, just make sure you irrigate. The beauty of Malorganite and other slow use organics is they will not burn, but you need to irrigate. So if you're not irrigating, then you're going to have a problem there. So right. go ahead and throw it down, but be sure you're watering. So. Mm -hmm. Um. That's why I love my people. Can you light a fire this Just right. open the window and have a fire. Keep right? <laughs> it going. Um, I had to leave due to lag. Hmm. We're still lagging? No, we're not lagging. Okay. We're fine. Yeah, I think we're doing good. But yeah, Aiden, tell me, tell me more about that project, brother. 
I want I want to hear more about it. And because you better post some pictures on Instagram, maybe. Yeah, you better. And then uh, to another fellow lawn buddy out there of mine, I don't know if he's in here tonight, but um, if not, I'd appreciate you guys getting not giving my boy a little pressure night, JC, the lawn care guy. I meet this guy every year at GIE Expo. He's a super cool dude, but the only problem is that he never lives up to his promise of making YouTube content. Or when he does live up to it, it's for a month and then he breaks off course. So if you guys could do me a favor, go over to the Instagram page at JC the Lawn Care Guy. Go give my buddy some pressure to make some more videos. Because if there's anything I tell him to do, it's make more videos. Jacob. Long term, thank you. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? That's uh, that's Diana, my neighbor. Oh, hello. Which side is she on? Over here? Two houses down. There's some nice lawns on this block. I think yeah. you're starting the, the trend of, hey, we need to get... We need no, to you know, it's lawn. funny because Al and I were talking about this the other day when he was here. Uh, um, this house right here, every time I do something... That's true for me. Yell at me not to cut my grass anymore because it makes hers look even worse. <laughs> that's the point. You need to... Um, just got into lawn care uh, because of you, you and Alan this summer. Is it weird that I'm more excited about getting stuff right here? I love fall because that's when the temperatures are going back down and the lawn is just going to look better no matter what you do to it, right? Especially for Halloween. That's my favorite time to show my neighbors because that's when I get to interact with everybody when I'm handing out candy. It's just so much fun. No matter where you live, the spring and the fall always look the best. Oh, yeah. Even for those that are in the south where it's hot, when it's less hot in the spring and less hot in the fall, everything just thrives. Yeah, I mean, in the summertime, though, you have a better chance with uh, liquid iron because you're not getting all that rain, which can flush it out. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, let's see what we got here. Sometimes it's all about just keeping it simple and, and not, not trying not to overthink it because as soon as your mind starts to, you know, things like that, people freak out. Take the shade. There's not a whole lot you can do about moss. Sometimes it's just about starting from the bottom up and keeping it simple when you're trying trying to figure out what's going on. But it's easy to let your mind get the best of you because you're like, oh God, it's, I got a brown spot. You know, is it gross? Is it a fungus? <laughs> But hey, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of things that can happen. Mm-hmm. Um, clear yesterday. So what what grass thinking. type do you have, Mr. Cheese? It's a KBG. More work, but it's looking great. Um, Patrick Hand. Hey, Jake, how many accounts are you servicing now as opposed to a few years back? Well, I'm definitely doing eight more uh, compared to what I used to do two years ago. You guys know. Um, I'm just a, I'm just a kid who lives at home. I have my own local in twelve yards right now. So I just you know, you know get in with some. I, I had a spot in my yard where I had a big spot die out, and I stuck up like a just patient with uh, the Liquid Next products. <laughs> I would also just never spray your lawn with her. Your shows were still connected. We were using my phone as a hotspot to see the situation a little bit. So we got we got about 20 more minutes to an hour. You want to keep going? or? I'm fine with whatever. Okay. Yeah, because we had that breakup at the beginning. Can you guys hear me okay? Can you see me? Can you see Luke? <laughs> All right. Uh, Andy's Lawn Care says Steeler Echo for hand tools. Uh, would you pick if you could pick one? I've used both. Um, steel makes an awesome product. They have a lot of power. You see the pros using steel and you see the pros using Echo. So they're very similar. If I had to choose, I'd probably choose steel. Um, but there's nothing wrong with Echo. Like I said, it's whatever you can afford to. Don't feel like you have to have the Cadillac of small gas engine lawn tools. You know, if, if Personally, I, I have a Toro. I, I have a Toro 40 volt. Um, it was their Powerplex platform that they now have the same. But for my yard, it's convenient for me with that 
and it has a lot of power, but I have a gas echo blower that I love. So I, I go both. I have some battery, I have some echo, um, you know, so it's not, they're both pretty much pretty close to each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whatever you get, just take care of it. Exactly. You know, do the maintenance on it you need to do and, and don't beat it up and don't, you know, put it through conditions it shouldn't be put through. And But if I had to choose and had unlimited money, I'd probably pick a steel. Me too. In fact, I actually am getting a lot of questions like this because I did a video the other day uh, teaching you guys how to calibrate your sprinkler. It's a really good video. I recommend you go watch it if you haven't. Very in-depth. But in that video, I also demoed a line of sprinklers from like a, an industrial professional company called Big Sprinkler. And a lot of you guys were telling me, you know, Jake, these are really good sprinklers, but they're overpriced, right? But that goes back to this question. In fact, this question is a great analogy of that. Because a lot of you guys want to ask me, well, Jake, when it comes to equipment, do you want to buy something that's cheap like an Echo? Which is nothing wrong with an Echo, but it is, you know, it's... It's a homeowner trimmer, it's a little cheaper. Or do you want to pay the extra money and get something like a still? Me personally, I would choose the still. I mean, I don't have a still right now. I'm not looking to invest in one yet. But if I was to make the decision, that's probably what I would do. And it's the same with my sprinklers, right? I want to buy something that's going to last a long time. And that's what these sprinklers offer. Yeah, they're expensive. I can agree with that. But they offer benefits that you can't get anywhere else. And it's the same if you buy a steel trimmer. And we just had this conversation before we went live. If exactly. You, if you buy a $20 sprinkler and you get a season out of it, yeah. and then you buy another $20 sprinkler the next year, or maybe you think, oh, maybe I'll buy this one that's 35 bucks. Well, you've already wasted a decent amount of money on two sprinklers when you could have put a little bit more money down in the beginning and bought something just one. that's a little bit better. So if you have a little bit of wiggle room, invest in a steel, you know, over an Echo or, you know, I've used a million different, I've used a bunch of different weed whackers and a bunch of different leaf blowers and it, it goes down to also how much property are you doing? Do you have a big yard? Do Would a battery unit work for you? Or, you know, do you have something that you're going to be using? Like, are you like Jake where you have a bunch of accounts that you're going to use day in and day out several times mm -hmm. a day? You know, it's put the money up front and it may last you forever in your house. You buy an Echo or a Steel over somebody else's brand that's $40 on Amazon, right. you know, that may last you a year and something to break, will break on it where if you spend 300 bucks on a weed whacker, you might get 25, 30 years out of it, you know? It's just like a good lawnmower. Buy a good lawnmower and you're there. I just spent a lot of money on an Earthway spreader that was overkill. My Both my front and back together are probably like 6,800 square foot. I bought an Earthway spreader with an 80-pound hopper on it. Did I need it? No. But it's going to last me forever exactly. because it's good quality. It's good. It's a professional-grade spreader. And a lot of times when you go with a professional-grade brand, you have the support from them as far as parts. You know, it's like us with our dire store that's a steel dealer. We can get you any part for any steel piece of equipment, and we can service them. You know, so if you're going to buy one, go through a dealer. They just offer you much better support than going to another big box or even online. So put the money that you can afford towards something good and look at it as a fact you may not need to buy another one for 25 years. So Yeah, that's, a, that's another thing. I want to mention to you guys. So with every product I, I recommend to you or really any product that the community recommends to you, right? Like, so back to what I was saying. So the... Uh, so any product I recommend to you guys, like Big Sprinkler or the next line, right? I'm not trying to push those at you, right? I'm not saying buy this product because taking advantage, well, I'm not taking advantage, I don't want to use that word, but I'm using the reach that I have to offer more options for my community. That's how I want you guys to think about it, right? Like the Big Sprinklers, they're a little pricey. I can understand this, especially when you're used to buying a $20 sprinkler, all right? You don't want it? Good. Doesn't bother me, right? But the idea is... I'm taking on these opportunities with the reach I have to offer more for my customers. Good? And don't feel like you have to compete with, you know, it's not, it's not a status symbol. If you can't right. afford a Honda HRX or you can't afford a Time Master or a Super Recycler, don't feel like you have to have one of those because if you keep your blade sharp and you do the maintenance on it, yeah, your, your $180 push mower may not last as long as my super recycler does, but if that's what you can afford and you take care of it and you take pride in it, it doesn't matter. You know, at the end of the day, your, your lawn could look just as good as Jake's or mine or Al's or anybody else that's out there, and you can have equipment that's twice 
less expensive than what we have, but you know, whatever you can afford, you use. Don't feel like you have to keep up with the Joneses and, and buy <laughs> what everybody else has. You know, I want to get a striping kit. I know it's. I don't need to spend the money on it right now. My lawn still looks good, but hey, maybe for Christmas I'll ask my wife for a striping kit because it would make a nice gift. But I don't feel like I absolutely have to have one just because everybody else has one. I would love one, but you got to be realistic. Use coupon code JTLK for ten percent. Oh, really? <laughs> I'll have to keep that in mind. Okay. See, we'll Jake's big time. You're big time now, Jake. I don't know about big time, but I'm in the presence of a celebrity. <laughs> Um, real noob, is there a lawn care plan you like to follow with the next products? What do you think about watering the lawn every day for 10 to 12 minutes to keep with the heat stress? Okay, this is a question I get a lot. I'm going to be doing a video uh, midweek about it. So, as far as the next products, I don't follow any schedule. In fact, if I, what I'll do is I'll actually message the guys over there, Paul and John, and I'll ask for their recommendations, and then I'll do a Accordingly. And then sometimes, you know, I'll switch it up a little bit. I'll put together a cocktail in between, just to kind of add a little variety to it, all that stuff. Now, to go back to what you were saying about the watering uh, every day for 10 to 12 minutes, uh, we actually have a term for that because when it comes to irrigation, um, there's three types of irrigation there's a deep and infrequent, and then the second one, which I'm going to talk about, is syringing in a second. And then the third one is what I like to call overseed. Typically, when you water three times a day, for a very short amount of time just to keep the seed wet but uh, anyway back to that second one the syringing right this is something that I highly recommend all of you do in the summer if you have any trouble areas so definitely continue to water deep and infrequent like I tell you that's gonna help promote deep roots but in conjunction to that if you notice any areas of your lawn that are stressing or even if your lawn isn't stressing get out there in the afternoon or evening like around 4 or 5 p.m. And go ahead and do a light syringe on the areas that need a little more attention or even better. Maybe if you have a DIY system like what Ryan Knorr has or what I'm about to introduce to you in Monday's video, then I highly, um, then run your system. Run your system for a day for like 10, 15 minutes a zone, right? Because if you do that, you're going you're gonna to keep the lawn cool. And in conjunction with that, you're going to be watering deep and pushing deep roots. So either way, it's a win-win situation. See, and I never knew what syringing was, and I didn't realize I was doing it until we talked tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have an area along my driveway and along the curb of my street. It's just baking, and it's starting to go dormant. So I've right. been going out, and I've been hitting it with just the hose and having my little wand on shower, and I'm just hitting it till I'm seeing standing water, and then it soaks in. And it's funny because I have a section of the lawn that I put some sod in in the spring, and it's under shade. But this heat is still turning it yellow, and I've been going out there each night, giving it a little bit of water, and within 20 minutes, it's turning green again. So sometimes you just need to focus on the, and you'll, the problem areas will make themselves very visible within a matter of one day or two days of extreme heat. You'll be able to see, hey, this spot needs a little bit of TLC versus this area that's shady that looks good. So, you know, mm -hmm. do what you can to just get it through this heat. Right. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got. Blind guy 210. I got a striping kit for Father's Day. Best gift ever, man. That sounds great. Of course, um, you can stripe turf type called turf type called best. Gift. Yeah, that's all Alan did when he lived up here. Cool <laughs> um, cool season grass tends to be easier to stripe than warm season because warm season's a little bit stiffer of a a blade, a little thicker of a blade, depending on the the type of grass. But cool mm -hmm. season grass is usually striped. Oh yeah. Most baseball KBG, fields are KBG. You know. You know. Wrigley Field, that is cool season and beautiful stripes. You know, most baseball fields, football fields, they're going to stripe very well because it's a cool season grass. All right, let's see what else we got. Is using liquid aeration okay when temperatures are this high? Yes, Shane Davis, do it. But um, if I'm going to assume here that you're using the next liquid aerate. When you do put it down, put it down at the highest rate possible, 9 ounces per thousand. And then once you put it down, this is a soil product, so definitely go ahead and water it in and get it down into the soil. This is a perfect product to put down right now for a couple of reasons. Number one, the name, right? Aeration. That's something, if we could do it every year with a mechanical machine, I'd recommend you do it. But that's not something I recommend you do. And that's what, look, that's what this uh, aerate product fills, right? It allows you to aerate the lawn year-round without having to rent a machine and try, a pull a, and, try and pull a plug, which, which is impossible to do. Uh, in compacted dry soil. So this is a great product for that. Put that down and water it in. 
And then another benefit you're going to get from it, which I really like in the summertime, is potassium. In fact, potassium is it's a macronutrient that I highly push in the summertime because what it's going to do is it's going to help build cell structure in the plant to make it more resistant against diseases and all sorts of problems. So the idea is, is by putting that potassium in there, you're going to, you're not only going to help open that soil up by breaking bonds, but you're also going to, uh, but you're also going to help build cell structure in the plant and build just a good structure for that plant to live in. All right, anything else? Let's see. Yeah, where is everyone tonight? It's very empty. Here, let me ch let me check the time. I plan on getting off here at one hour. What's it say? And we got about five more minutes. We'll see if anybody comes in. Real low dad. What's up, Mr. Double Dark? Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? You know, we were just we were just talking about you tonight. In fact, we had a bunch of questions about. Uh, we had a bunch of questions about problem grasses in Bermuda Yards, and I told them if you want a good resource, go check out Mike over at Real Dad because he's the type of guy who maintains, he's just an everyday guy who maintains Bermuda grass and shows you how to do it properly. So I, I pushed him your way. Yeah, your name's been brought up a lot. Mm hmm. You're the man. Um, Tim Fisher, busy for. Friday, I just got in here. Well, Tim Fisher, just to give you a little context, I got a little guest in here, uh, Luke Kern from uh, Gus Bach Ace. In fact, he actually talked a little bit about his products over here from the line. If you want to check that out, we mentioned that at the very beginning of the stream. So when this is over in like a couple of minutes, you can check it out. We had some connection issues, but we started a new video. So yeah, we, we did. find part of it and then find the rest of it here. But. What's up from Fargo, Jake? My wife, Alia, says, hi, Jim Bob. How are you doing, my friend? Thank you for coming in. Tim Fisher, hello. Yeah, it's very, it's it's weird. Like, it's so full of questions, and then it just stops. Did I miss anything? Let me see. That's what I like to do. I like to see. It's nice to go back yet, yeah, because sometimes they come in so quick, you can't keep up. Mm-hmm. Uh... Oh, just got into the lawn care because you... Oh, yeah, he just wrote that. He must have copy-pasted it. Um, get some... I see some VP liquid gold. <laughs> That's it, right here. Um, oh, yeah, Aiden's going to tell us a little bit about the uh, renovation. Um, so, the backyard, all I'm trying to do is achieve the best backyard like my front. Well, start pushing it right now, man. I know you want to wait till the fall to do it. But you have the products, man. Like, I know, I know Alan and John, they hooked you up with the, uh, the soil activator. Um, right now is a great time to put down the aerate, maybe a little dethatch back there. Maybe some 700 green effect, right? Or RGS, or maybe all four of them. Just put them all down back there, right? Get that soil moving. Jim Bob said, would you ever use something like weed and feed if you're way too late in your pre-emergent? It's not going to help with any kind of grassy weed, so... Crabgrass, that kind of thing that a pre-emerging would treat, uh, weed and feed, it's not really going to take care of. That's generally more of a, a broadleaf. Your dollar weed, your clover, mm -hmm. your dandelion. There's a couple new products this year, too. I didn't get a chance to bring them, but um, Roundup's making Roundup for lawns now. Uh, I've, that's what I've been using to spot spray because it takes care of nuts edge. I didn't think I would have any nuts edge, but I like the fact that it also worked on yellow nuts edge. And lo and behold, I was... Hashtag enjoying the mow a few weeks ago, and I found like four or five sections of the beginning of Nuts Edge. Temperatures were low. I sprayed it, and it took care of it with one application. So that's a new one. And they're all Roundup's also making a crabgrass control now that whitens as it kills the way Tenacity does. So um, that's another newer product that's out. So I would say if you're having crabgrass issues now, just try and get through the summer and you know treat them in the in, with a pre-emergent and early in the spring. You know, because we be well, weed and feed's not going to take care of. Plus, weed and feed's kind of high in nitrogen, and with this heat, I don't know where you are, but it's so hot here. Oh, yeah. I would not recommend putting it down. Definitely not. Um, that's that's another thing though too. You guys hear me talk all the time on this channel. I like to practice when it comes to treating weeds or really any pest in my lawn for that matter. I like to practice IPM, integrated pest management, right? 
which means that if the problem isn't negatively affecting the lawn everywhere, then there's no need to blanket treat it, right? If you have lawns and if you have weeds in a couple of areas, it's best to get liquid concentrate like this right here, uh, but get it in a liquid concentrate form, yep. mix it up into a hand can sprayer and just walk around your lawn and spot spray. In fact, um, if you want to get a little more advanced with that and have a little fun, you could check the link in the description of this video when it's over. I have some, uh, I have some affiliate links down there if you want to check them out. Uh, one of them in specifically the Sprayers Plus. Um, I love those people over there. One thing, I, one uh, sprayer I really uh, love um, in particular for this community, especially if you're dealing with a 5,000 square foot lawn, the uh, FH25E. It's more of a homeowner, two gallon sprayer. Highly recommend that. Great sprayer. Also good for next products too. So yeah, it's good to get into the rhythm of when you're done mowing, go on patrol in your lawn and, and look for what's right. out there. Or mow tonight and two days later, take a stroll through the yard. And what I do is I take my little one gallon hand can that I have and I start my back and I walk and I look in a shoulder width section. If it's within my wingspan, I'll look there and if I see something, I spot spray it. And it's pretty good. You know, I take care of it. And I know people that will buy this and keep this hanging from their belt as they're mowing. And as they walk their lawn, they'll start hitting dandelions or that's clover smart. or whatever they see. So that's what's nice about this. I buy the concentrate just so that I can have it on hand and utilize it. The only thing is if you are gonna store chemicals over the winter, try and keep them in a basement, or if you have a heated garage, you don't want them to freeze because as soon as they freeze, they lose their potency. That goes for selective and non-selective herbicides, whether it's a Roundup Total Kill or it's a 2,4-D product like a Weepy Gone. Don't let it freeze, or you're going to lose some of its potency the next year. It's not I, totally I made that shot, mistake. but it will not have the same potency that it has. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're going to mix up a batch, it's best to try and use what you've mixed up because it, it can lose some of its potency once it's mixed if you use a concentrate. But I'm guilty of leaving it in the sprayer. Oh, and me too. For a month, and it still works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thing I learned because you guys know that I like to put the surfactant in there just to kind of help it stick a little better. And I talk a lot about dish soap. That's a great thing to put in there. Make sure you don't shake it up, okay? Because when you shake it up, it bubbles up and it's harder for the liquid to come out and distribute itself evenly on the leaf. So what I would do is make sure that, especially when you're mixing a surfactant, what I would do to save a little time is instead of what you know a lot of people recommend to you, fill the sprayer up halfway, put your stuff in there, fill it up the rest of the way, just go ahead and fill it up, right? Fill, if, what, fill it up all the way to one gallon, put your concentrate in there, and then put the soap or the shampoo or whatever your surfactant is in there, and then just go ahead and stir it. That's what I would do to make sure that you don't bubble it up and that you get the most out of your application. Yeah, you don't want to foam. Once mm -hmm. you foam up, you lose. That ruins it. Uh, Aiden, I'm from Gus Box Ace, which is in our area, Northwest Indiana. We got three stores in Indiana and one in Illinois. Um, let's see. Um, what do you do with the leftover spot spray? I leave it in my sprayer. Um, I it, it just sits in my shed. Usually, I'll mix up a gallon at a time. I don't mix up more than I need, but sometimes it's hard to mix up. Everything goes by this many ounces per gallon, so it's kind of hard to mix up a half a batch. So I would say leave it, and you know, there's there's not much you can do there. Yeah, hang on. Let me uh, let me adjust something real quick. How much time we got left? Uh, the sun is moving. Yeah. We could go this way a little bit. Just gotta adjust the backlighting. That's all. That's good. There. I'll scoot over. Well, if you want to answer a couple more, that's fine. Me. People in here, Gus Box Ace um, Hardware from Lansing here. Bit. Someone's complimenting our popcorn. That's right, free popcorn on Saturdays. Really? Yes, yes. I gotta come to your store. You should. I'm working tomorrow. Come visit us. All right, I will. Um, it's hard finding a ride. Right. Yeah, that's the tough part. Um, let's see what we got here. Uh, see, Rizzo, all about the exposure. <laughs> Real old dad, man. You boy guy. All right, well, I think this is a great place to go ahead and end it. I just want to say a big thank you to all of you for coming in here. I really appreciate all this. Uh, is there anything else before we go? I don't off? think so. Um, just come see us at, if you're in the area. We'll help you out. I work at the store in Lansing, and I'm very open to answering a lot of questions, but we do everything from fixing windows and screens to um, selling just about anything you would need for the lawn or the home. So I've learned a lot you know, since I started working there like three years ago, it's just my part-time job, but we are like a family and we are, a you know, ACES thing is, 
you know, nationally known, locally owned, and we are locally owned. So we we know the area. We stock what people use. You know, the areas of their homes. We carry a lot of products for older homes, and we're there to take care of you. We do deliveries and all that kind of stuff. So um, we'd love to have you. Anybody that's local, come in and see us. And like I said, I'm very glad that we're building a relationship with Jake and with Alan, because especially with Alan. Being from this area, you know, I was interested in reaching out to him, and it's great to have Jake close by because I live in the same. I'm about 20 minutes from Jake's house. I'm in the same town, so um, that's all I really have to add. I'm super happy that Jake had me on, and uh, I don't know a lot, but I've learned a lot from Jake and from Alan, and I'm all about helping people. So. Um, it was great to be on and answer some questions. It was awesome. All right. Well, with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys this Monday with a new video. If I don't see you guys, you're going to be dominated. See you later. All right. That's it. Awesome. That was great. <laughs>